she just won't leave out. She always, she had to teach you to water surround where she can't get out. Yeah, you need a boat. You know it. Yeah, need a boat or something. Need a boat. Walk Back in the old days, the original Americans called on the great spirits to open the skies and let the waters flow free. The farmers prayed for rain, for it meant food and water and prosperity. Even the trees and flowers and nature itself thrived on rain and still do. However, some people, a more urban breed, do not hold the rain in such high esteem as the Indian or the farmer once did. They loathe it and have cursed it for decades to no avail. They are the people who live in Roosevelt Heights. To them, rain means floods, disaster, and evacuation. Roosevelt Heights, a small community of 200 black families, is located at Hahn Freeway and Second Avenue near the confluence of White Rock Creek and the Trinity River. It was incorporated into the city in 1955. For the second time this year, Roosevelt Heights has been brought to its knees by floods. This is Toon Street, where family after family packed up those belongings they could carry and moved in with relatives or friends in another section of town. Those folk that didn't leave stood in high places and looked on. Water in some places was five feet high. The houses looked like boats, only they didn't move. The insides were a disaster. Here is where a man and his wife lived. Water was three feet high on the inside of this house. The Christmas tree, the stereo, the bedroom furniture flooded like driftwood in a calm stream. One man, a Chicano, methodically waded through chest-high water, carrying valuables for the owner of this house, who was in a state of shock. The water will be gone in a couple of days. The people will move back into their homes. They did it before, and they will do it again, and again, and again. About 400 people live in Roosevelt Heights. Their average annual income is around 2,600 a year. Many are on Social Security. Some are welfare recipients. Their average annual income is said to be $3,000 less than what is said to be the average income for Dallas. The living conditions in Roosevelt Heights are tolerable and the neighborhood is said to be stable. People have lived in Roosevelt Heights on an average of 14 years. Some of the residents own their own home. The area is poorly situated for such conveniences as shopping centers, schools, and places of employment. But it does have a ballpark and a playground for its youngsters. Roosevelt Heights is a peaceful place. It's green, and to its residents, it's home. On a bright sunny day, it looks like a little country town in Louisiana. There are small churches, a neighborhood grocer, and a gas station. Driving down the tree-lined roads tend to make you forget you're in a poor section of Dallas. If it weren't for the fact that it's a floodplain, some of the more affluent may have turned the area into a country club. But a row of junk cars along the side of the road remind you of where you are. So do the streets and the houses. Houses that have weathered one flood after another. Houses that are old and tired. Houses that are occupied by people who don't have the two things they need most, time and money. There has been much controversy and many problems concerning the flooding of Roosevelt Heights. One of the possible solutions was found in the recently adopted $172 million bond proposal. 